Hi guys and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I thought we'd go with a fun colour along. I recently added to my 10 books to finish uh, update, I'll link the video below, the Morgan O'Brien Matchstick Mouse Summer version. And I thought we'd do this cute little page um, also because it is a woody colour, two birds, one stone. So um, this is a page I'm doing with my wonderful friend Helen. So don't look Helen. <laughs> <coughs> um, and I thought you know it's Amazon paper it's that cheaper paper to make life easier with pencils um, lately I've been enjoying laying down a marker base first so we're going to do that first and then we will um, colour and shade over the top with pencils so pull out your markers let's have some fun we're going to put down a very plain base coat of alcohol marker now as always use whatever you have guys it doesn't matter um but obviously i'm going to do my leaves in a, um, a slightly darker green lighter green than the slightly darker green of my grass i've gone with a beigey color for the um tent um i'm gonna add a little bit of a red for my berries and So essentially I'm going to do like a pink so I can add red to that. Um, I've got some yellow for this um, little nightlight he's got. We'll add some brown for the... Bear with me guys, I'm actually pulling more markers out as I go because I obviously missed some. And I've got some purple for his um, uh, outfit and his blanket. I know this is his wormy friend. I have no idea what this little guy is. Um, so yeah, now I'm using my old Ohuhu set. I've been using these up. So they just have the colour numbers. I will share with you which ones I'm using in case you have that same set and you want to use the same ones. Um, so green leaves we're starting with. A very pale green, number 59. Um, as always, I use my smaller nib and we are working side to side to get a nice even colour lay down without any streaks. Um, I've got a couple of pages behind this one so that we don't ruin any pictures underneath because this stuff will go straight through. And we're just laying down our very nice, relaxing base coat over everything. So I'm going to do all my greenery that's not my grass in that. And then I have this uh, number 42 that I'm going to do my grass in. Slightly more yellow green, a little bit darker. I've had this set since I first started colouring a couple of years ago so it's like um, it's about half a set now uh, slowly working my way through using it up really like the Ohu Ho I have already bought um, the big brush set that they do Keep working that in side to side. And there's always guys, once you start an area with this, you cannot stop. So, you know, if your tea's about to go off and you're going to have to get it out of the oven, don't start a big patch. 
If you're likely to have to stop for anything in the middle, it's not the best time to do it. actually decided which pencils we're going to be using. Um, I've pretty much tried all my pencil types on the Amazon paper now so don't need to do anything research wise. So we might be able to have some fun and use our brute Funa squares I think. going to assume that's a rock. Um, it's Monday today for me. Um, if you guys don't know, I now do four long day shifts. And I no longer work on a Monday. So my husband is at work. My dogs are currently asleep. And my house is just so quiet right now. You know when you sat there and thinking, oh my god, I know exactly how to use this small moment of peace. I'm going to go turn my camera on and film something that can't be destroyed in the middle by anything. And end up with the useless footage um so grass is down i've got a brown for um all of our woodwork i've got 93 in my set so just a nice rich reddish brown quite a dark color uh, little stakes as well and one random twig. Um, we'll just do all the little, might as well do that now, I'm nigh. Little branch over here. Um, right, I've got this number 77 for the base layer of his little hat. feel like he's all colour coordinated and I'm going to do his little blanket in the same colour. I've then got this pink colour, this number seven, um, for the berries. That is, that is brighter than I hoped for. They usually are, aren't they? <laughs> in the Okuhu. Bit of pink. Um, I've got some yellow for these... Um, little wisps in here. I'm going to do this entire jaw with a base of yellow. Um, and then I have number 95 is this kind of cool toned brown as my mouse base um, it's kind of a grey brown use this um, same blend on my other page and light him so 
we'll do the same I colour that all over him as my base um, I think we'll go with a pink patch why not pop a layer of that crazy pink down on there And then the tent itself is going to be this um, kind of beige-ish colour, 104. Um, let's see what that comes look out looking like. A bit calmer at least. And I'm going to do my entire tent in that colour. So we will finish off our base layer and then we will be back to do some more interesting bits with our pencils. So... I will see you guys in a moment. Okay guys, so we've got our base layer down all in mocha and we're ready to apply our pencils. I thought we'd use the Brute Funa squares because I think at this point quite a lot of people have these. They're very affordable. I try to use um, easy access pencils as much as possible. Um, it's also nice to show you guys that you know you don't have to have really expensive pencils to create fun pieces. Um, and the beauty of working on this Amazon paper with a marker base is you really will get away with a lot less pencil for a beautiful effect so we're going to start with our greenery I've got 081 and 066 so we're darker than and a lighter than my marker base um, and I'm just going to come in and I'm going to pop in where I want some of my darker colour to be just bringing it in around the edge as always firmer towards the edges and then fade it off and let it just totally disappear into where it will meet other colours. It's going to look a lot better. Some some techniques do call for harsh lines, but um, in this case, I like that kind of blended, smooth look. We'll add a little, and then we'll kind of darken as we feel we need to. Any shadowed areas underneath the other leaves will be darker. Folds in towards the centre of the leaves will be darker. You might be able to hear some noise. I'm sorry for that, guys. We're having it's quite a bit of work going on out back, which is uh, where my window faces. So <laughs> do excuse the noise. And uh, it doesn't really matter. You put it put it wherever you want to. You'll still get a fun effect from adding some different colours into this. Do try and get your shadowy areas in. I think I'm going to work all my dark in first, and then I'll pop some highlighted areas in next. It's been so busy and so noisy I have not sat down and done an actual colour along for a while. I know some of you guys thought I'd stop doing them. I haven't, I promise. Um, I'm off work this week so although there's still a bit of noise going on in the house I'm, I've got a bit more time so I'm trying to get ahead with some of these, get some done for you guys. I'm wondering if I'm far enough in. Let's see. The only thing is sometimes then I, rem I forget to move uh, around. But hopefully you can kind of see. That's looking a lot more yellow uh, on camera than it does in person. I swear there's green in that. Uh, what's showing up a bit lighter on camera is darker patches in person very weird when you're filming sometimes uh, obviously once we've got all this down we might find that we want to add an even darker green to this mix If 
Okay, I'm going to pop some of this 066 into our kind of bits and pieces that would be our high points, create some little highlights. The real beauty of this because you've got your marker base down, you know, you're not all you're doing is adding a little bit of colour nice and easily. I think I do want a darker green, to be honest, just a little bit. Let's try that. Clearly one of my favourites. Let's see. Let's add 046 to that. Just right on the edges. Just to give a little bit more contrast. So I'm putting that in the furthest reaches. Okay, so that is my green combo. Um, I would just kind of repeat that exact same theory for the little leaves. We want a bit of darkness on the left, a bit of darkness on the left of that side. So it looks like they're curving around. I immediately add a little bit of a 3D shape to them. And take your middle tone, put that out a tiny bit from the darker one, just to blend that in. And then a little bit of highlight, a couple of spots. And that is that. I've got a couple of tones for the branches. I've got a dark and a light. We've got 114 and 093. And, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry guys. Um, same again, I would just add a little bit of depth towards one end and the bottom end. Same for this log, dark underneath, just in the bottom. Faded off. Um, I think in this instance we're going to take our cream 069. I'm just going to pop a little bit of lightness on the bottom of that log because these are little fireflies in here. And I'm going to add a bit of yellow to that 049. Guys, come by. Uh, same for the little handle. And while we're here, let's decide where we're going to be affecting. The darkness is going to. Oh, sorry, guys. See, this is it. I forget to move about when I'm zoomed in so far. Just. Adding a little bit of colour and fading it off. Around the edge of that. Just 
we're adding yellow to the edges of everything that this light would hit so the edge of his ear the edge of his hat maybe a tiny bit on the tip of his nose just for fun I'm gonna have to come out with a bit guys I'll keep doing it otherwise and you'll just miss everything um, I'm gonna pop a tiny bit onto this tree as well thinking that's probably it Okay, dark brown and the lighter brown being the 093. I'm just going to pop that a little bit across the top and in the middle here. We're just creating different colours, texture, interest. It just stops your piece being flat and boring. A little bit of darkness in the bottom of here. And underneath the bottom of this one and then some light up top I'm leaving that yellow in we'll do this uh, his hat and the purple areas next so we've got some depth underneath the ear especially because we're we're casting shadows now as well don't forget a little fold here darker in underneath the hat brim and for the bedding same again a little bit of shadow underneath this worm underneath I'm not actually sure what this guy is can't tell if he's a beetle or something not sure Add in some folds, a bit darker into that fold there. And a bit of darkness in the back. We'd have some shadow from him in here. And then I've got kind of a middle tone, a 053. I'm just going to work that up and now a little bit from the darker purple. Just a little. And I'm going to leave the highlight area as my marker. add a little tiny bit of depth along the edge layer just to make his hat look like the brim's folding over a little bit back to the middle tone just working that in from the dark leaving some of the marker down as our highlight colour so I don't want to cover it all I 
again I'm going to add a tiny bit of my darker colour just here give that a little curled appearance like it's tucked in around him and that is our purple not so keen on this blend here so I'll just add add a little bit of the darker colour in just to mix that a little bit better right easy okay so that takes us to our brown mouse I'm going to take my darker colour 114 we've got underneath the fold of this here and that adds a little bit of depth along the bottom as well bring that out some fade that off so we don't get a harsh line do a little bit the same sort of thing just in here on this right hand side and a tiny bit in the bottom only a tiny bit because his ears underneath the light it would be quite bright okay for our little mouse guy we'll add some shadow underneath him and in underneath the body of him just going around the edges adding in some depth and some shadows I just really wanted to show you just how quick and easy this technique is. I know it puts a lot of people off. Some people struggle adding a marker base, but it's just around picking the right tone. If you've picked a medium colour, you want to darken a light and you use it as your medium texture. If you picked a, t a pale colour, you need a dark and a medium and you use it as your highlight. But you've got to make it still work like a three pencil blend. You know, uh, I think that's the bit where people get a bit stuck and then they don't come together properly popping in quite dark under the brim of that hat okay so uh, Danny arrived home so we had to have a bit of a pause there and now can't remember what I was doing so Greenery is done, you just want to rinse and repeat for the rest of that grass which I'll finish on my own later. We've done the purple, we've done the wood, we were on him weren't we? So we were using the darker colour 114 and we were just popping him some shadow in. Just giving him a bit of depth so we're just putting dark colour in underneath everywhere. Uh, I like to give his little cheeks a little bit more definition. So we just add some darkness around them. And in underneath here. And probably the side of his nose there. And underneath the eye. And we were shading in underneath the hood, right? And then I've got this lighter brown 093, it's a bit of an orchery colour. I'm gonna pop a little bit of that on the top of his nose, underneath the yellow highlight there, and across his forehead. Nice have four heads that's where that's going just gonna smooth out that dark edge I've added there his nose is rather chiseled a little bit of bad contouring going on there let's blend that in a uh, little bit of highlight on the top of the cheek And I'll just blend that in as well. My camera is kind of right where I need my face to be, so 
Bear with me guys while we work around that. If you've got harsh lines that you don't like, just bring your darker colour out a little bit really faintly and it will fix a lot of sins. Let's highlight his little fingers and his elbows. top of his ear uh, underneath this yellow and I'm just going to add a little bit more of the darker brown in here the whole point of the brown marker is that we don't have to colour everything in we are adding low lights and highlights and we're leaving the rest because I've used quite a darkish brown. Okay, we're going to need a tiny little bit of grey for his, his eye. And I never thought about that, so we'll have to pull one out. Let's see, we'll have... This one will have 065. And I'm going to pop a little bit of that. In the bottom, oh, and around the outside edge of that eye. A little bit darker around the very edge. Um, and for his pupil, I think we'll take a black Oscar pen. I can find my black. Um, in case you guys haven't seen my Posca pen um, how to, always shake your Posca pen before you use it or your paint will have separated and you'll get that really runny non-opaque mix and then wonder what's going on. No pressure on the nib. I'm just going to make his pupil nice and dark and then once that completely dries I'll probably pop a little white highlight in but we'll let that dry. Um, right, let's see, what do we want? Let's do our little worm. So I'm going to take my darker brown, the 114, and sharpen that a little bit, bear with me. <laughs> so posh, literally have a little box off to my side. <laughs> what can you do? I don't want to get up. I don't have a bin. We have a pot. Little bit of depth underneath. That blanket. And we'll make him a little bit dark underneath. In here. And then with my lighter brown, the 093, just going to add a bit of that in the middle. Now for him I've used a very light brown, so I'm going to use the marker area as my highlight. So this time we're adding low light and mid tones. I mean, but of course, sorry about that, I mean shadow and mid tone. There we go. So although I've used the same pencils, you get completely different colours by the time you're done by adding different base colour markers in. Um, so we've then got this uh, tent. I'm going to do a couple of bits with you and then leave you to finish that off. But what we're going to do is again, we're going to make it look like there's a fold on the edge by giving a dark edge and then fade it off 
to nothing. Just a slim, slim edge along there. Nice and dark. And then just fade that. In, so you've got no harsh lines. And we're going to do that all the way up, um, except for here. So here I'm going to add a thin strip of yellow just along the edge where that light would shine. And so the only difference there is that I will add my little bit of depth just below it and then fade it into nothing. And then I'm continuing to just put a very, very slight amount of colour past where I've just put that yellow. So I've still got a little bit of depth to my fabric without it being where my white source is. And then again, just here, I'm adding that darker curl. Um, and then you just kind of rinse and repeat. So either sides of the folds, you're going to have a little bit of colour depth. And then you're just going to blend that out into nothing. Do that. all the way up. Ignore that there's no lines, just make your own. Keeping it quite dark right in the seam and then disappearing that colour all the way off as we come inwards. Now you will do either side of these pleats as you will. So you do the same thing on the other side. Dot line, fade it out. Do it all the way up, do it here, do it there, and I'd probably do one just there as well. Do exactly the same on the inside. Um, obviously here you're going to be a little bit darker. Um, here will be different, you're going to have quite a bit of light, so you're just going to very faintly add some colour over that yellow, but not a lot. So 
in both sides. Down here it'd be a tiny bit darker, a bit more like the outside edge. So you can add a bit of depth into that. And then fade that off. Do it both sides again. And then as your mid-tone, you're going to take that 093 and I would put that over my darker colour and just blend that out a little bit further. We're leaving the marker as the lighter tone, so just bringing that out a little bit, just lightly, just to blend the colour in. And you can afterwards go back over with your darker colour just to deepen. Same as always guys, just deepen that back off again. Get your contrast back in so it doesn't disappear. And it's just adding that little bit of warmth to that colour. Okay, so I'm going to finish the leaves and the tent and then I'll be back to do the grass, the bush and this patch and we'll finish off this little light sauce. So I will be right back. Okay so I'm back and we have done the tent. I finished off all the leaves that were left um, so we've just got a few more bits and pieces to go. We're going to work on the Pinky Reds colours. I'm sorry for the noise outside. Um, the work is still going on. So um, I've got a kind of a deep pink 052 and a darker red 008 to go over this pink marker base that we laid down. I'm going to take that darker colour, the 008, and... I think I'm going to work that into the stripes. So we're going to go one way from the corner on one row of the stripes. So I'm going to do that alternately. Let's fade that off. Um, we'll see how we go, guys. If we get much noisier I'm probably gonna have to save filming this till later let's see so dark from one end to light and then we'll take that 052 and we're just gonna work that a little bit further along and blend it off into nothing into that last colour and then I'm just going to do the same thing the other way And again with that deep pink, just gonna work that. So we have those opposing stripes, and then we've got our berries, and I'm very simply going to pop the darker red into the bottom in like a little C shape. Well, it'd be a U, wouldn't it? In a U shape. <laughs> Up the sides a little bit and along the bottom and just blend it off. So you'll not end up with a harsh line. And then I'm going to pop this pink. I want to bring it a little bit higher, but leave some of the paler marker in the top. There's my highlight, and that is that. 
See? Such a, a simple, quick effect. So much fun. Um, right, we've got our light source. I'm going to cheat here. Um, I know not everyone in the world probably has one of these, but if you were going to invest in one open stock pencil, I would advise grabbing yourself a Prismacolor Premier White. Um, this, it, it, it kind of does what no other pencil will do, and it is the most opaque white that you can find. It will lay nicely over other colours, over marker, and can you see that it's actually giving me a white over that yellow? So I'm just going to uh, soften that up around the edges till it disappears. So the inside of my jar is now a white tone. Um, you can add a little bit of white to the edge of the tent, into the hat, the tip of the ear, really brighten and intensify the highlight we added earlier. You can even very, very gently add a little bit more white to the night sky that we lightened. To give that slight ethereal glow um, and then I'm just going to add a little bit more of my yellow, my paler yellow, blend the white into the marker so the middle of the jar is white, looks a little bit brighter it's getting pretty loud outside isn't it guys, I'm so sorry <laughs> hence the uh, lack of colour alongs at the moment I've got a Sakura Jelly Roll Metallic, um, it's just a gold, it's number 551, I'm assuming it's just um, a shiny gold, I'm hoping it has a sparkle in it, should probably test it, yes, well that's a metallic, I don't think I want a metallic, so I take that all back, I'm not going to use that, I'm going to dig out, it's the one weird thing about Sakura, they're Metallics have glitter lids uh, and their glitters don't. Now their glitter pen is a very pale yellow so I think what I'm actually going to do is take my pencil uh, dual metallic. I have the gold but a, a gold sparkle pen it, it doesn't matter whatever you have and I'm just going to go over those little um, fireflies, glow bugs, something in there with a little glitter sparkle pen um, and I think I am going to finish that effect off. Um, his eyes dry now so I've got my Signor white gel pen because you guys know out of the gel pens I like this one. I'm going to go over the black lines of the jar. I'm just going to wipe them out. So you have to go back and forth a little bit when you're laying over pencil. Just to get smooth lines. And you need to keep cleaning off the tip of your pen. I'd suggest tissue. We don't have to be the animal I am. Um, but it is important and it's really important to remember when you're done using it to clean off the nib, the nib. Don't let it all dry on the end of your pen. It really shortens the life of the nibs. I've noticed they start to get jammed up and they start to catch and not work properly. And I found that mine, I mean, I can usually use these all the way until my ink is gone without um, them catching or giving up on me and 
They're definitely one of the most opaque white pens that I've found. Uh, I haven't tried the Ortiza ones though, so I don't have those to compare to. I don't know about those, but I buy these usually in a three pack from Amazon. And they last me, well, ages to be honest. I don't really do that much. If I had quite a big area to do, I'd probably use my white Posca. Right, so that's my jaw taken care of. Oh, we'll give him a little... A little sparkle. I'm going to do um, a couple of white dots. Give him a bit of highlight in the eye there. Um, I've purposely left the bug alone. I like the way he is. He's a black and white stripe and I've completely left him totally alone. I've done nothing. Absolutely nothing to him. I'm just leaving him be. I like it. Um, the bush we have, we've got some true greens. We're going to use the same green tones I used for the leaves. So we have 046, 081 and 066. I'll show you in the smaller version. I just, um, just add bits and pieces really. I tend to make my bushes look very bitty and... I just choose some patches and make them dark. Remember to, to blend it off so you're not going to end up with a line where the next colour meets. Uh, we'll have a bit over here. My stomach's rumbling. Uh, and then I'll take my mid green, my 081, and I'll work that out from my darker patch. Let's pick a few places to pop this colour. I don't think I'm going to get much longer on my guys. I bet that noise is driving you mad. I'm so sorry. Um, right, so just work that out from the darker green. Um, and then I would take my lighter green and add a few patches of that as well. I've even left a few spots that are just the marker for a fourth tone of green. And uh, just make them look very textured. No real rule to it. A bit like I do grass, just patches. Doesn't matter where. Um, so you're going to do the rest. Same for the rest. And then we have the ground. Um, I've got some different green tones to match the base that I've used. I've got 078, um, 048 and 115. So I take my darker colour and the same rules for me apply. I'm going to tend to give a darker edge to my pictures. I don't really know why. It's just preference. You don't have to do that. I like the way it looks a bit like a, a cameo with a, a shadow around um, so I do that all the way around the edge and just fade that off into nothing just to give that <sighs> can you do it? gotta have the work done gotta be appreciative they're doing it it's not like they can hammer pour in and cement them quietly is it? <laughs> Um, and I just do that all the way around the edge and then take the middle green tone, the 04A, and work that into that colour and bring that a bit further out so it blends into the marker colour better. Circles, circles for blending, just to get those colours to meld and disappear off into your marker. That is that. Do I have a brush? Um, and then, you know, places, let's see, anywhere along the bottom that we can add some texture. In here. That we've got little edges to work from. And just fade it out. Same thing again, just going through the different colours. 
So I'd take my middle green and then lay that on top and bring it further in. We're just adding different coloured texture so the grass doesn't look flat. Bit of interest without really having made any effort basically is how that works. Uh, 115 is my lighter green. I'm just going to pop that in a few raised areas. Have myself a few light green patches and I just you know the same underneath him we're gonna have some shadow and then all of a sudden things start to look more realistic the moment you add some darkness around him he's gonna pop up from the page look like he's you know prominently sat on top of there it's gonna look more real Um, if you want to get really clever about it, he would cast more shadow over this side of the light. So you can bring this shadowed area further out and extend it more than this side where the light source is sat straight above. So, you know, a light source straight above would cast a short shadow, but a light source further behind will cast a longer shadow. I know you guys know this, but I know you guys also like me to explain what I'm thinking. By no means am I assuming anyone doesn't is too stupid enough to know. Um, I just, uh, I know a lot of people like you to talk through your thought processes but then words come out of my mouth and I think great now it seems like I think people don't know what a shadow is that's not where that was going so we'll just nip that in the bud right now so over this side I'm extending that shadow out a little bit further have a bit of realism in this quick page why not And underneath him, it's a bit shorter. There we go. Again, take the middle green, pop that over, work it further out. Circles to blend. I'm also using that to smooth my darker green in. I'm not, um, I don't know if you've noticed on my channel, but I'm not really a big use of blend, uh, user of blending mediums, blender pencils, blender sticks, I don't know, whatever else you use. Um, I much prefer using paler tones of my pencils. Um, I just think it stays true to colour easier and that in the long run it's actually just easier than a lot of unless you need to lay more layers down then you can manage on the paper you're using and then obviously something like zest it's gonna work better but I can really um, find an instance where popping a marker layer out down won't just do that for me and most of the time if they're double-sided um, I found they tend to be a nicer paper quality anyway so I can get more pencil down and blending pencils won't be a problem. We'll see, I'm sure there's somewhere where zest it's useful and I will use it, I do have it, but I don't need it very often. Um, I would do my darker edge all the way around. And then again, my highlight colour, I'm going to work into a few bits and pieces. Almost kind of patches of green. added into the marker base for just some different colours. You could add a bit of brown even if you wanted to. Um, let's see now, what do we have left? The stones, the stones. I'll do one of these as well and then we'll finish everything off. And, uh, 
off camera. I won't make you wait through all that and then I'll be back. So I've got for greys for these stones 073, 027 and 065. I'm going to do the same thing I did with my berries. I'm going to pop my darker grey in the bottom and fade it off. I'm going to take my medium grey and I'm going to bring that up a little bit and fade it off. My tiny little stones, we're not going to be that extra, we're just going to finish them off. And then I'm going to take my paler grey. Am I on camera? Oh god, yes. Thank you, Lord. Right. And I'm just going to finish that off. And then because we've popped that pale colour over the top, I'm going to go back in with my darkest grey. And just add that depth back in the bottom. Okay, guys. So I need to finish my grass and my berry bush. And then I will be back and I will show you as the finished piece. And there we have it. One page all done. Um, I'm really pleased with how he turned out actually. I was a bit worried in the middle that he wasn't going to look right but we did. We've got all the grass done and this berry bush is finished and that completes my page. And this is what I love about alcohol marker. Number one, it will make Amazon paper work just wonderfully with just a little bit of pencil added. It'll make it look like you've spent hours and hours and put so much effect and layering into your page when essentially you've just done a little bit of shading with a couple of colours on a really fast alcohol layer and you get this beautifully detailed artwork. So I hope you guys found this useful. I know it's um, quite a simple colour along to be back with but um, as I say I'm just finding it a little bit difficult to find quiet times and um, we're in the middle of the night at the moment so um, hopefully be able to get a couple done this week ready. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, working in this guy to be honest they are such fun books these um, I believe I think this is the first page I've done in this book I have done one in one of my other Matchstick Mouse books and really enjoyed it. So I am glad I got this one done. It was a buddy colour with one of my lovely friends. So um, I think I might have to try and get another page done in here this month because it's um, nice and relaxing and simple to do. So I might be able to get another one finished before the end of July if I'm lucky. Um, I hope this was interesting guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, please give me a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel and you're enjoying the content, please do subscribe. It helps my channel out a lot. And apart from that guys, happy colouring, have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.